Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're checking out this video is for history nerds and engineers. If you've ever tried assembling furniture where nothing quite fits together, every screw is a different size, every hole seems like it's a different diameter, you know it's absolute madness. I have put furniture together, but everything usually seems to fit. If it doesn't, you return it. Now imagine that's not just your furniture, but everything. Every machine, every repair, every construction project. Welcome to life before 1841, when one <sighs> brilliant British engineer decided that enough was enough. Okay, okay. Standardization, an accomplishment of humanity. And apparently it's British. One brilliant British engineer decided that enough was enough. Hi and welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. Hi. I'm a dual American and British citizen and today I'm about to tell you the fascinating story of Joseph Whitworth, the man who quite literally helped hold our modern world together. Okay. You see, we take standardized parts for granted today. If you need we a do. replacement screw for something, you just go to the hardware store. Even, even though even though we have standardization now, sometimes it doesn't, it's not, not everything's standard. You know what I mean? Sometimes it doesn't. There's too many standards. There's so many standards that when you get the standards mixed up, then there's, like, what's the point of having standards? Am I making sense? It's early. But in the early 1800s, every single manufacturer was basically doing their own thing. It was complete chaos. Mm. Now, Whitworth looked at this chaos and he was like, guys, there has got to be a better way to do this. But here's where he proved that he was a genius. Instead of actually creating yet another standard, he became sort of an engineering detective. He traveled across England, collecting thousands of screws from different manufacturers, studying them meticulously, and measuring everything down to the smallest detail. He sounds like a barrel of fun. Now let me paint you a picture of his dedication. This man developed measuring tools so precise they could detect differences of one ten thousandth of an inch. That's like splitting a human hair into 100 pieces and measuring each one. Wow. And remember, this was whoa, whoa, 1841. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry, wait. That's like splitting a human hair hundred pieces into a hundred pieces. And measuring each one. I think the term engineer gets thrown around a lot too much. I am an audio engineer, but really, that's not an engineer. <laughs> this guy is an engineer. And remember, this was 1841, so he didn't have computers or electronic devices, just pure mechanical ingenuity. Ugh. But his real breakthrough came when he started looking at the actual shape of screw threads. Everyone else was using sharp and angular threads, like tiny triangles wrapped around the screw. But Whitworth mm. realized that rounded threads with gentle curves actually were far superior. And when mm. I say this is revolutionary, I am not using my American exaggeration. I mean it literally changed the course of history. During the Crimean War, British forces had a massive advantage because their weapons and machinery all used standardized parts. While other armies oh, were struggling with and repairs and replacements, right. British equipment could be fixed quickly and efficiently. It Holy crap, I didn't even think of the military aspects of this. Let me just back up to that photo of the Whitworth thread. See, these look like the triangles, but maybe if you zoom in extremely close, they're rounded. Let's just, I need a different photo. Whitworth thread. British standard Whitworth. Show me on Wikipedia. Oh yes, look at that. Yes, okay. So it's rounded. The old ones would be a triangle. I see. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. An English engineer, entrepreneur, inventor, and philanthropist. He devised the British Standard Whitworth system, which was created an accepted standard for screw threads. He also created the Whitworth rifle, often called the sharpshooter because of its accuracy, which is considered one of the earliest examples of a sniper rifle, used by some Confederate forces during the American Civil War. That's not good on the resume. He, when he died, he bequeathed much of his fortune to the people of Manchester with the Whitworth Art Gallery and Christie Hospital, partly funded by Whitworth's money. 
Whitworth Street and Whitworth Hall in Manchester are named in his honor with a U. He was born in John Street, Stockport, Cheshire. He died at the age of 83. Hmm, how did he die? It doesn't say how he died, y'all. You know what I mean? Smart guy. I don't think I could hang with him. But Whitworth realized that rounded threads with gentle curves actually were far superior. And when I say this is revolutionary, I am not using my American exaggeration. I mean it literally changed the course of history. During the Crimean War, British forces had a massive advantage because their weapons and machinery all used standardized parts. Wait, the Crimean War. I don't know anything about that. Why is Britain fighting in the Crimea War? Crimea, Crimean, Crimea, Crimea River War. The Crimean War was fought by an alliance of Britain, France, Turkey, and Sardinia against Russia. <sighs> and now it's Russian again. While other armies were struggling with repairs and replacements, British equipment could be fixed quickly and efficiently. That it is was like huge. having a universal mechanical language while everyone else was off speaking different dialects they were trying to decipher. The impact mm. was so massive that Queen Victoria herself took notice. Now here's where it gets really interesting. When other engineers tried to improve on Whitworth's design with their own sharp angled threads, they quickly discovered something fascinating. These supposedly better designs kept failing under stress. The rounded threads that Whitworth believed in distributed force much more evenly, and this made them significantly okay. stronger. Now Whitworth's work also changed manufacturing. Before for him, if your machine broke down, you had to either get parts from the original manufacturer or have new ones custom made. After him, any competent machinist could make replacement parts that would fit perfectly. Yeah, this is crazy. This seems obvious to us now, but back then it must have been revolutionary. And the ripple effects were enormous. Factories could now mass produce parts with total confidence that they would fit anywhere. Repair costs plummeted and machine reliability skyrocketed. The entire pace of industrialization accelerated. It's not nice. an exaggeration to say that Whitworth's standards helped build the modern world. Even today, Whitworth's influence is everywhere. That garden hose you used this morning, Whitworth threads. Your grandfather's vintage camera, what were threads. His standard became so universal that we still use his basic principle, even though many countries have switched to metric measurements. Think about that for a moment. Uh... In our world of constant upgrades and planned obsolescence, here's an invention from 1841 that's still in use today. And the best part is Whitworth didn't stop at screw threads. He applied the same methodical, precise approach to everything he worked on. He developed industrial standards for all sorts of measurements and tools. He was like the Leonardo da Vinci of precision engineering, except his works weren't just beautiful. They were practical solutions. So the next time you are assembling furniture or fixing something around the house, take a moment to appreciate those perfectly formed threads. They're not just holding your stuff together. They're carrying on the legacy of a British inventor. Now I hope hmm. this story has helped you appreciate how something as seemingly simple as a screw standard could have such a profound impact on our world. Remember that sometimes the most revolutionary changes aren't flashy or dramatic. They're the quiet solutions that make everything possible. Thanks for joining me on this journey through engineering history. As always, leave your comments below. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, Kaylin. Y'all be sure to go to Girl Gone London and like and subscribe. Let's look deeper into this Wentworth fella. Whitworth was created a baronet by Queen Victoria. What's a baronet? A baronet, or the female equivalent, a baron... Netus is the holder of a baronet's a hereditary title awarded by the British Crown. He was born in Stockport. Where's that? Show me on a map. Stockport, UK. Very good. Oh, okay. This makes sense. It's basically Manchester, Southeast Manchester. That's why. His memorials are in Manchester. Y'all, he was getting down to the Hacienda. He was going to the raves, listening to Blue Monday. He was an indentured apprentice to his uncle, a cotton spinner. He was more interested in the mill's machinery 
soon he mastered the techniques of cotton spinning industry. Then he moved to London, where he found employment working for Henry Maudslay, the inventor of the screw cutting lathe. And he worked alongside James Nasmith, inventor of the steam hammer. A lot, lot of talent in this screw lathing company. Oh, look at that. Yes. So these were how screw bolts were, but this is how he made them rounded. That does seem like it would be stronger, doesn't it? It's like a an arch. His next innovation in 1840 was a measuring technique called end measurements that used a precision flat plane and measuring screw, both of his own invention, the system with a precision of one millionth of an inch. Wow. He devised a standard for screw threads with a fixed thread angle of 55 degrees. He made a rifle. Oh, the British government asked him to design the rifle. They commissioned him to design a rifle. The Wentworth rifle had a smaller bore, which was hexagonal, fired an elongated hexagonal bullet, and had a faster rate of twist rifling, one turn in every 20 inches, than the Einfield. However, the new bore design was found to be prone to fouling, and it was four times more expensive to manufacture than the old version. It was rejected by the British government, only to be adopted by the French army. <laughs> Why is that funny? I don't know, but it is. An unspecified number of Whitworth's rifles found their way to the Confederate States in the American Civil War. That is that bad part on the resume. He also designed a large rifle breech loading gun, but the British Army rejected that too. But it was used in the American Civil War. Wow, what a guy. From what I understand, the Industrial Revolution began in Britain. This must have been a big part of that. Huge part of that, right? Thanks, Joe Wentworth, wherever you are. Well, I'd like to thank my patrons. I'd like to thank my Buy Me a Coffee folks. Thank y'all for watching this with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.